You might know that companies hire consultants to solve problems, but what does that even mean? Today, I'm going to help answer the question, what do consultants really do? Hey everyone, my name is Hisham Khan and welcome to Income Over Outcome, your go-to source for all the college and career resources that you need. Now in my video on the week in the life as a consultant, I walked through every single thing I did from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed. And if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely watch it to learn what the day to day of consulting is like. But the most common question I got in the comments of that video was what do you actually do when you're sitting in meetings and doing analyses? And that is a hard question for any consultant to answer because there's so much that we do. It's not like a normal job where you have pretty much the same goal every single day. A software engineer, for example, can easily be like, oh, I log into work and start coding for my company that does ABC. But in consulting, your goal changes on every single project and even sometimes multiple times within a project. Our main job is simply to help our clients make the best decisions for themselves and then support them however they need it. But that's really broad, which is why people don't really understand what consulting is. So I'm going to walk through real life examples from my consulting career. But first, you need to understand what impacts the type of work that you're going to be doing. And that essentially comes down to two things, your position and the type of consulting firm you work for. Now, when it comes to positions, the exact titles are different from firm to firm, but for the most part, it goes something like analyst, Analyst, associate, consultant, manager, director, senior director, and then managing director. And each one of those roles has a different scope of work. Analysts are typically hired right out of undergrad and their name pretty much tells you what they do. They help support their project teams by analyzing data to help support the recommendations. Usually analysts just get data from their project leadership and are expected to work through it and ask any questions to understand what exactly the data is saying so that their project leadership can and present it to clients. Now all levels from analysts to consultants are pretty deeply involved in what you think of as normal consulting work, which is analyzing data in Excel and working in PowerPoint. But of all the roles, analysts spend the highest percent of their time heads down doing that types of work. They might be in client meetings here and there, and if they have direct clients they work with, then it's usually someone at the manager level or below. After about two or three years, most people go from becoming an analyst to an associate, which is like being an analyst but with more independence. They're expected to know what exactly to do with little direction. They also spend a ton of time doing analyses and sometimes even more than analysts because they have more experience so they're able to get stuff done quicker and more accurately. So they have a lot of different stuff getting thrown their way all the time. Associates are also expected to be more involved with clients and most of them own relationships up to the director level. Now moving on to consultants, they're supposed to be the true true experts on the client and all the analyses going on. They're supposed to help their analysts and associates work through any problems and guide them to the right solutions. That means they also spend time heads down working with data and doing analyses, but it should be less than their analysts and associates. They're also expected to own relationships with key client leadership like vice presidents, so they have to be involved in a ton of meetings and also lead them. Now managers are where things get a bit more interesting. They shouldn't really spend any time working in Excel, but instead are more involved in working with clients to help figure out what exactly the problems they're having are, and then lead their team of consultants to help figure out what the best solution for the problems are. They usually have final say in what should be presented to the client and what solutions are going to be offered. And even though they might not be directly involved with all the analyses, they have to have a really strong understanding of them, not only to help support their teams, but also because they interact with high level C-suite executives. So they have to be ready to answer any questions on what exactly their team is doing. As you get up to the director level, the work also starts changing. Instead of being directly involved with managing the project team, your focus is more so on developing client relationships and helping figure out what their pain points are. The goal here is ultimately to help your firm sell more work. Quick reminder to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, because if you don't, then you'll miss all my videos and we can't have that happening. As you move higher up in a consulting firm, roles shift to be more of a sales focused role. Directors spend more time helping their project team than senior directors who spend more time selling work all the way up to MDs who spend more than 90% of their time developing client relationships and figure out the best ways to sell more work to them. And the more work you sell, the more money you make, which is why some MDs in consulting are insanely rich. I spoke all about that in my video on jobs
jobs that earn over a million dollars. So feel free to check that out. Hopefully now you understand how work can change at different consulting levels. But the work consultants actually do is still a bit vague. Like what are analysts analyzing? What are you talking about in meetings? And what exactly are directors trying to sell? And to understand that, you need to understand what the different types of consulting firms are. Starting off, you have your big general strategy consulting firms like McKinsey, Bain, BCG, and Kearney. These firms don't have a special industry they work in. So one month you could be working on a project for or a communications company like Verizon, and the next for a car maker like Honda. Then you have boutique firms which specialize in specific industries like healthcare, life sciences, education, finance. Essentially, there's a boutique firm out there for any single industry you could think of. I will point out though that even at the big general consulting firms, the higher up you go, you're expected to specialize. So people at the consultant level and below can work in different industries, but that's only so you can figure out what exactly you like doing. Once you have that figured out, which is usually by the manager level, you're expected to choose something to specialize in. I specialize in healthcare consulting, so that's what all of my examples today are going to be in. Within consulting, there's also a ton of different types of projects. The three main ones that come to mind right now are tech implementations, operations improvement, and pure strategy. I've worked on projects in all three of those, so I'll give you an example of each. Tech implementations are projects where you help clients onboard a new software that they've decided to use. So it could be anything from the software they use to do their HR functions, to the software they use to do actual work and build their customers. Accenture is one of the most well-known firms out there that does a lot of tech implementations. A consultant's job is to figure out what problem the client is trying to solve by installing the software, who it's going to impact, and how the actual work for the client is going to change once that software is installed. Then they use all of that to help build a roadmap to help the client get to where they want to be. One of the softwares I helped implement was for a huge hospital system who was really inefficient and slow at building out services to insurance companies. So we helped install a software that prioritized every single service for the client so they could build them out in the most efficient way. We spent months trying to figure out what the client needed and wanted, then worked with the IT team to customize the software software to the client's needs. The next step was to ensure the transition to the software was as smooth as possible. So we helped test the software to make sure it did exactly what we needed it to, came up with training plans for people who were going to use the software, and did analyses to show the client how much more efficient they were now that they were using new tech. Now operations improvement projects are where consultants help their clients update their processes to be more modern, quicker, and accurate. One hospital I worked with was losing a ton of money because they were doing a bunch of services but weren't getting paid on them. So we spent weeks really digging into all of their processes and understanding where their problems might be. We found that basically the entire way the hospital system was run was wrong. From people at the front desk registering in patients with the wrong insurance, the people on the billing side constantly billing out the same service over and over again so insurance companies were denying them and not paying them. We outlined exactly what was wrong for the client and told them how they could prevent the issues from happening. So that meant we had to create a bunch of how-to guides and training manuals to help the client train their staff to be more efficient. Strategy projects are usually about growth. How can we get our clients to expand their services? How can we get more people using their services? And how can we get into more markets? Things like that. Usually the client will come to you with a really broad question or a problem. Then you'll have to build a strategy that makes sense. For example, I had a project where we had a really big health system and then a really big medical center attached to a college, both operating in the same exact city. They came to us to see how they could work better together to serve the patients in that city. So our team did analyses into the patients in the cities and what they needed and the types of services that each of the hospitals offered. Then we used that to build out recommendations for how the hospitals could combine their services and then also invest in more services that would be better fit for the population of that city. You probably figured out that the general gist of all of these projects is digging into the problem or question the client has, doing analyses to figure out why the problems are occurring, and then recommending solutions based on what you find. And that is pretty much what consulting is. I totally get that there's so much consultants do that it can be confusing, but let me know if this video helped clear up the air a little bit. If it did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss my videos and check 
check out incomeoveroutcome.com for all the college and career resources that you need. I'll see you next time, but until then, peace.